In this video, we're going to look at a basic introduction to correlation and scatter plots. When we're talking about correlation, we're talking about the relationship between data sets. Let's start off by looking at some types of correlation. What I'm going to do is draw a scatter plot now, and we're going to look at the temperature and the sale of ice creams. So we might draw a scatter plot, and this is going to be our temperature. So our temperature, and this is going to be in degrees C. And this is going to be now the sales of ice creams, so sales of ice creams. What would we expect to see? Well, as the temperature increases, the sale of ice creams should also increase. So if it's a really hot day, we're going to have, say, 25 or 30 degrees C, we would expect the sale of ice creams to be a lot higher than if it was negative 4 degrees, for example. So what we might do is observe some days and we might have a day just here and the temperature is very low and the ice cream sales are also low. We might have another day, temperature increases slightly as do the, the sale of ice creams. Then as the temperature increases, we can see now that there's a relationship forming. We can see as this increases, give or take, so do the sale of ice creams. So as the temperature goes up, the sale of ice creams also goes up. If we look at this, this looks to be in a line. We would generally say that this is strong positive correlation. The closer that is to a straight line, the more uh, the relationship between them is, is stronger. So what we'll look at is positive correlation. As one value increases, the other increases also. We could go ahead and draw what we call a line of best fit through here we have approximately the same number of values either side of a line. So this would give us a rough line of best fit. Let's now look at what we call negative correlation. We're talking here about linear correlation. So we're looking now at the relationship between two data sets. So let's say we looked now, we went into a car park and we looked at the, uh, the age of cars, so let's put that on, so this is the age of cars, and we looked at the value of the cars. Let's assume now, and we'll put this value, and we'll put age in years, let's assume that these are just bog standard family cars. They're not antique cars or sports cars, they're just straightforward, run of the mill, from the garage, nothing special cars. With this now, we would expect the older the car, the less valuable it is. So if we had now a very young car, let's say that this was naught, let's say we had a six month old car, if it was of the same type, we would expect it to be a lot uh, more valuable than one if it was, for example, 10 years old. So if we look now, we could go ahead and draw a scatter plot. So these are just typical examples of a value. So for example, here we might have had three years and we might have a value of £6,000. This one here might be two years and £8,000, six months and £12,000. We can see now that there's a relationship forming between the value of the car and the age of the car. We can see as one increases, the other decreases. This looks to be moderately strong uh, negative correlation. It's not exactly in a straight line, but it gives us some idea. So with negative correlation, as one increases, the other decreases. So for example, now if we looked at, again, going back to temperature, if instead of ice creams we had hot chocolate, as the temperature increases, we would expect the sale of hot chocolate to decrease. So that's an example now of negative linear correlation. The value of the car reduces as the age increases. What we're now going to look at is now no correlation. And when I say no correlation, this is no linear correlation. There might be other, uh, for it might be another relationship going on with this, but let's say this now, let's go for uh, the distance from school, so someone lives distance from school, and we will have now their maths score in a, an exam. So exam score we wouldn't expect to, uh, for these to have any great relationship. So an exam score on how far away from school you live, well, you could say well, if you're spending longer on the bus, then you're more tired. But generally speaking, if we did a scatter plot for this, we might see some points and they could be absolutely anywhere. 
So what we could say from this is that there is no linear correlation. There might be some other relationship. So for example, now, if we looked at, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, draw another scatter plot. We might, um, let's just straighten them out. We might have an example now. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. What we'll have, let's have a point there. Let's have a point there. One here, one here. We might have one just there, one just there, one just there, one just there. It would be reasonable to think that there's some relationship going on here. But this would give us now, if we looked at the correlation, it would give us no linear correlation. So these are the three uh, things that we're going to look at. So no correlation. So no correlation. Because all of these uh, examples we're going to look at now are uh, linear examples of linear correlation. We've, when, when we've got this example of no correlation, we, of course, couldn't use a line of best fit. The line of best fit will allow us to predict certain values. So if we look at this one, for example, if we wanted to know uh, if it was 28 degrees, which might be just there, roughly how many ice creams would we expect to sell? Or if we sold 30 ice creams, what was the temperature? With this one, if we had a two-year-old car, what was the value? If we had the value of a car to be £3,000, what would we expect the age to be? That's how we would use a line of best fit. And we're going to look at doing that shortly. With this, we can't use a line of best fit. So this is a correlation. It's stating the relationship between the two data sets. Sometimes if you take your studies on, you might hear this being called bivariate data. Um, but for now, it's just two different, uh, two different values. OK, let's go on and, and try a question then. What we've got here now is, uh, it says the table shows the sales of cans of drink from a vending machine over a period of 12 days in June. So here are the days. We've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and so on and so forth. We've got the temperature and the cans sold. In part A, it says construct a scatter diagram of the, the data and draw on it a line of best fit. If you do take your studies on, you might look at something called the explanatory and response variables. This is the explanatory one. So as this changes, the response variable is the counter sold. So this is the one that is going to determine. So we would call this now the independent variable and this one the dependent variable. If you're studying this at a very, uh, well, basic level, you won't need to know this. But as we would expect, as now the temperature uh, increases, we would expect now cans of drink from a vending machine to increase. So let's go ahead and plot this. So what I've done, I've put some axes on here. We've, uh, it looks like we're going up to about 500, 4, 500. That's along the, the y-axis. Along the bottom, we're going to have now the temperature. So in this case, the temperature here is going to be along the x-axis. So we've got the degree C. Hopefully you can see enough of that. So we've got temp, and this is now going to be degree C, and we've got the sales along the y-axis. So let's look at the first one, 15 and 104. So let's go ahead and plot this. So 15 is going to be here, uh, and 104 is going to be about there. This, remember, is only a rough plot because I've got such a huge um, a y-axis or the number of cancelled. 17113. So 17113 is going to be about there give or take and we'll put that on 17113 so i'm just going to mark these off underneath as i go 2188 so 2188 is going to be about there so let's put that on 2188 uh, 25275 so let's put that on 25275 i can just about see these so i apologize if any of them are inaccurate then we've got 21, 2, 12. So 21 is going to be here. 2, 12 is going to be about there. So 21, 2, 12. So straight away, this looks to be forming now some positive linear correlation. 18, 150. So let's find 18. 18 is just here. 150 is on there. And that, that's pretty good. That looks another. So all I'm doing is just marking these points now with the crosses. 18, 150. No, uh, 15, 90. 15.90, so let's put 15.90, and that's going to be just there. What we would call this uh, sometimes is an anomaly or an outlier. I mean, it's not that far out, um, but if you think about in school, if you looked at science scores in an exam and math scores, you would expect most students to have, there should be some correlation between the two. 
but we might get what we call an outlier. And that could be a student who's incredibly good at one and incredibly poor at the other. And they would end up with some cross way out here or way off the line of best fit. Um, so generally speaking, when we do our line of best fit, we do treat some of these uh, values with caution. Um, I don't think that 1590 is so far off the planet. Uh, 2205 but some of them we do have to just be very careful with so 2205 is going to be just here don't worry if you've got more than one on 20 it's obviously saying it's that was the temperature we can see we've got two days of 20 already 23251 so let's put that on 23251 which looks to be give or take about there that looks pretty good uh, 27 330 so 27 where's 27 27 is there 330 is going to be just about there so 27 330 i will go for it to just there. hopefully that's right uh 3425 so 30 is way out here 425 is going to be halfway so let's put that there that looks about there and then we got 29, 404, so 29 and 404. Uh, 404, 29, does that look about there? Okay, so that's give or take, that's what we get. So construct a scatter diagram of the data and draw on it a line of best fit. So we now need to draw our line of best fit. So all I'm going to do is go ahead now and put the line of best fit through and we can adjust it slightly as we go. Uh, you would generally do a slightly darker uh, colour than that, but this gives us now some idea. So if we look, something like that would be perfectly fine. So that would be our line of best fit. It says on here approximately how many cans would be sold on a day when the average temperature is 22 degrees. Let's go ahead and use the line of best fit. So let's grab this up. So 22 degrees. What we do is find 22 degrees on the temperature scale and we read across two so read up to the line of best fit and we read across that looks to be approximately 240 degrees uh, sorry 240 that'd be pretty hot 240 and that would be the number of cans sold if you're asked a question like this you must put the line of best fit on so, for example, if it hadn't told me to do that, then I would have gone ahead and done it. Okay, let's now look at another question. Um, the question is going to be, um, if 175 cans were sold, what would we expect the temperature to be? So, if we look 175 cans sold, we read across to the line. So, we drop the perpendicular down, the straight line down, and it's going to look now anywhere that looks to be 19 to 20 so we would now say 19 to 20 if that's the temperature so 19 to 20 degrees if 175 counts are sold remember that line of best fit unless we find an equation for it is just simply an approximation just to finish off, we're going to look at something called interpolation, or interpolation if you wish, uh, interpolation sounds better, and extrapolation. So when we're talking about interpolation, we're talking about now taking an estimate for uh, items that are within the data set. So for example, I, on this one, this was fine because we've got 240 sold, but because 22 is, is within our data set that we're dealing with. If I said, now, how many cans would we expect to sell if the temperature was 4,000 degrees? Well, we could, of course, extend this line, but we're extrapolating. We're taking data that's well outside that particular range. Quite clearly, it's never going to be 4,000 or 8,000 degrees. Yet this model would suggest that we're going to sell hundreds, thousands, billions of cans. So just be very careful. We must treat those particular items with caution. So if we're picking a value outside the data set, just say to yourself, does the model really support that? And that's called extrapolating. So there we go. That's just a nice basic uh, introduction to correlation and scatter plots.